Uh, my name is Fred Donovan. Thanks for your patience. Um, this presentation is on counterintelligence attack theory. Um, does anybody here work in intelligence right now? Um, either within a corporation or within, have you ever worked in, in intelligence, anybody? Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Some people, so some of these terms might be familiar with you. And if they're not, it's okay. Please ask me questions. Um, it's, I'd like to have uh, feedback, so if you have any questions, keep going. All right, so uh, I don't know if you ever saw this, but uh, uh, this is what Tim Berners-Lee said a uh, couple months ago uh, while I was out in Ireland, is uh, there's no one off switch, and that's, I'm thankful <coughs> for that because, you know, that's my job. We can't have a, an off switch. Um, I'm a former developer, so, you know, I used to program in Java and C++. Um, if you sit me down in front of it and you sit down a 22-year-old kid who is half my age, that kid's going to do a lot better job. So I, I don't claim myself as a developer. I just was at one time, which I think has helped me as a hacker. Obviously, when I say I'm a hacker, I'm an ethical hacker. Um, also an intelligence analyst. I'm trained and educated in that uh, as well. I work with uh, public and private industries. Um, so both, uh, well, you know what that is, corporations and, and government entities. Um, I'm a husband, a father, and a brother to many. So I, I call everybody brother. Oh, well, not gals. I call sister, maybe. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> hey, sister. Hey. All right, sister. Um, but uh, um, actually, I have six, four brothers, five brother, four or five brothers, and, and one sister. Sorry. But uh, so I got used to calling people brother, and it just kept up with me. So I still do it years and years later. Um, there's my uh, Twitter. And uh, about uh, uh, counterintelligence. So this is, a, this is really working with uh, um, the attack community in a different way. So I'm an ethical person. I work with uh, um, corporate clients or, or other types of clients, all based in the United States. And so I, I, my job is to find out information that can help them right, in better ways. And so um, this entails a little bit of, of really interesting stuff, and we'll get into that here. Um, last, a couple weeks ago, I saw this silly slide. There's several examples of it. It's just, you remember 10 years ago, for you guys that are my age or so, um, or gals, sisters? Um, you ever see that? It's just the silliest slide. And please, never use it, because it's a headache. All they're seeing, it's kind of like what Michael Howard said today, which is, uh, you know, all the customer sees is dollar signs. Don't use that silly slide. All right, let's get into intelligence. So uh, intelligence, uh, one of the first rules of intelligence is it's about conflict, okay? It's not about being right or wrong. It's not about uh, whose side is good. It's not about, it's really not even about who you interact with. So if your friends or the people that you uh, talk to on the internet um, happen to be in an IRC chat session and somebody comes in there and you're like, boom, I know that name, and you start communicating with them, it's not really a, not really a wrong thing to do in my perspective because that's a, that's a way of, of gathering information. Now, of course, on CERC or IRC networks, you know, there's, there's no way to know that that's that person. Okay, you don't really know who you're talking to, but you can kind of feel it out and get an idea. But remember, um, intelligence is a gathering method. It's about conflict, okay? Um, in, uh, uh, so, so there's three areas of conflict, right? There's uh, prevention, and these go along with some of the, the devices and software that we do today. There's prevention, there's detection, and there's defeat. And I've put my definitions here. But essentially, uh, uh, prevention, from my perspective in intelligence, is making a situation more advantageous. So we, use, we have a lot of preventive mechanisms and, and techniques that we use in, uh, in the corporate world today, in the, in the uh, hacking community today, and in, in the really information security community. Um, the deterrence, so that's when uh, preventive measures fail. Right, um, and then defeat. Now, generally one would think of, okay, so the last thing is the last straw, right? I'm defeated, they stole my data. That's not really what I'm talking about. When you think of intelligence gathering per se, um, when you're talking about defeat, you're looking for another way 
to resolve those issues, whether it be an intrusion like I'm pointing out here um, or whatever. It's just doing something in a uh, uh, custom way um, to uh, uh, really take care of the defeat and not just give up. All right, so when I, you know, when I did my uh, uh, dissertation uh, for my intelligence degree, defense in depth was a, was a really big thing out there, right? Did you hear what Michael said today, right? Never use that with a corporation? He's exactly right. I'm actually gonna explain to you right now why it's silly to use defense in depth. So I've read the thing front and back, and really the, the, the NSA fellow that made this was, uh, he had a, a good idea, you know? It's, it's like, uh, um, let's get all of the information out there that people know, which are best practices on hardware, software development, fixing your code. Uh, they didn't think of that so much back then. Uh, they do now, but uh, let's get all of this together. We're gonna call it a defense in depth, right? Strategy. All right. Really, it's a premise. So, but, but it concentrates, it really diverts you from some of the true information that you need to know um, when you're uh, um, gathering intelligence for your organization and trying to prevent hacks. So it, it says a few things, right? It says uh, defend the networks, defend the enclave boundaries, right? The firewalls, the, the WAFs, whatever it is. Um, defend the computing environment. Um, these are all, you know, these are good things. I'd say that's a good thing, right? It's a best practice. Let's keep going, right? Defense in depth is a best practice. But it's the, well, you know, I'm calling it BS. It's really not BS. Well, I actually did. I wrote it. So it really is kind of a little bit of BS. <laughs> I wrote it. I'd better stick with it. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, but it's really deceptive. So, um, Deception as a methodology, though, is, uh, is very important within uh, intelligence gathering. So as I say here, um, it is a great means to gather information. And uh, let me give you an example. So let's say I own corporation XYZ, right? I know that I am being attacked, right? I would like to use some type of method to well, I want to stop them. I want to prevent them from doing this. Um, perhaps I can find some information about them. How far can I really go? Uh, so what I do, or sorry, yes, what I do, what one can do in an organization is, uh, well, something like this. What if I own XYZ? I hopped on an IRC channel, found out, or, and, and I put in this blog, I said, hey, XYZ corpsite users.php has a really cool SQL injection. Go check it out. So I've, I've, I'm determining on these IRC channels that I know my foes are, are, are common to frequent. I'm determining where they're going. I've determined that. I'm on the IRC channel. I give them a little plug to, to go to my site and go to users.php, which didn't exist until today when I made it and I told them to go there. And really, users.php, I'm a fan of hacking backs, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, users.php has something on there that is uh, going to attach to their session. Um, and so I'm using, really, a deceptive practice, but I'm doing that for my organization, for my corporation, for my, uh, my business partner, whomever, whomever I'm working with. Deception could prove more useful in intelligence gathering than it certainly can um, when we think of, let's, let's, well, for instance, the presidential debates. So the presidential debates have a, a, a method of, uh, okay, let's get all of our information. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to attack. Uh, the president will, uh, I don't want to say, and I'm going to attack this person. I don't want to give away which side I'm on, all right? But uh, let's just say the president and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Governor Romney are, uh, you know, the foes here. So they're the opposite sides, and they're, they're going to uh, um, attack each other with information. Now, the deceptive practice doesn't necessarily come up there. Even though you might hear, oh, that's just a bunch of lies, what's probably deceptive is when the media gets that information, or sorry, their, uh, um, their personal media outlet puts out commercials on TV and says, you know, 
this guy's a liar, this guy did this, they withhold a little bit of information, they're doing deceptive practices. Yes, it's a little bit true, but it doesn't go all the way. That's where, the, that's where a common deceptive uh, practice um, might come in. Now, here's the reason I would have attacked, sorry, yes, I would have attacked, uh, um, would have wanted to attack, or I would have put up this link on the uh, uh, blog for XYZ, all right? I want to gather information, and essentially I want to hack the hacker. Now, you can go so far, right? You can, you can do certain things, and there are corporations that I know of that are respective that you may not know yet, um, but actually have a process of attaching some types of exes or something that will connect to the rootkit that is actually speaking back to that, per to that person or entity that has already connected within your system. And uh, um, that is a great way of determining you know, further information. So let's continue on uh, uh, defense in depth. So defense in depth is, uh, they say, is defend the networks and the infrastructure. So we know this, this is the LAN, this is the WAN, right? Defend the enclave boundaries. You know, we're familiar with this, this is firewalls, this is also WAFs, this is the uh, IDS and IPS. So these are, these are actually good things. You know, they, they've, they've come in a certain order and they've been helpful for, for certain ways of, of defense. Again, it's a defensive practice. Um, but, uh, and then there's other cool stuff that comes out, other different types of uh, hardware that comes out, and we might find that semi-useful in some manner. So we might deploy those and uh, build up an infrastructure of defense to keep those uh, attackers out, to lower our risk, and to hopefully um, protect our, our data, all right? What it's ignoring, though, is offensive controls. Now let's, let's go further. So it says, defend the computing environment. So you read through this, I'm oversimplifying it here right now, but this is exactly what this uh, fellow was talking about. So if you think about the computing environment, you think about access control. Um, I helped uh, Manico write a, a cheat sheet on access control, please go see it. Um, deploying WAFs, so uh, um, I am a fan of WAF, but I'm not a fan of forgetting patching. WAF should be a, 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 uh, a factor that uh, is inside a corporation, but uh, it, it shouldn't just be for virtual patching, right? Um, deploy IDS and IPS, you know, with, uh, but the problem with IDS and IPS is uh, they don't really define anomalies. There are attacks out there, which in my work that I look for that aren't, well, we, don't, we just don't know about. And I'll get it later in here. I have a technique that you may not know. It's well known, but it's a way that uh, uh, people will rewrite uh, viruses when they come out. So I'll get into that, and I'll, I'll show you what they use. And you, in, in the uh, information gathering, in the counterintelligence uh, uh, process, you will find this information, and you might find a uh, IRC community here, well-known hackers, a non-well-known hacker community to here, another community here that perhaps doesn't even speak English, but uh, they don't necessarily talk each other, which talk to each other, which is probably a really good thing. But when you are embedding yourself within these all these different communities, what you're going to find out is uh, their processes mixed with their process mixed with their processes could be a big mess for all of us, <coughs> and it's pretty fortunate. Now, of course, in the corporate industry, banks, you know, they, they put in a, uh, uh, they'll certainly put in some type of a agreement between each other that says, uh, I'm not gonna, you can't steal my information, I'm not gonna steal your information, I don't really wanna mess with your customers, but what we need to do is agree that we're all being attacked, so let's get together and let's figure out a way together to, to protect ourselves. And uh, um, it's a good thing that yet, these hacker communities aren't getting together. Of course, there's the anonymous, right? They probably do some certain, certain things. I'll talk to you really later about what, what, their, what seems to be their goals are, but they're not the ones we have to be afraid of. When you're in a corporate environment, you're probably more afraid about losing your data to um, state actors. Huh? 
So as I said, um, a certain bunch of other semi-useful hardware that salespeople seem to make up and sell to you. Um, the fence in depth. So it's based on known threats. It's based on things that we already know. If I am deploying my uh, uh, WAP, I can do custom signatures, but before I do my custom signature, I have to get attacked. I have to look at that request object and I have to write a custom rule that will customize for that uh, XSS attack, for that SQL injection, for whatever. So I, I need to write custom things, but those again are off of known threats. Let's talk about what is right about uh, uh, defense in depth, or what I feel is right about defense in depth. All right, there's an absolute premise of, of defense in depth uh, that consists of three pillars. And I think we all have a, uh, a need to understand this. People, technology, and uh, operations. I think that's, that's, uh, that's logical. We have these uh, uh, pillars that we're thinking of in our defense. Let's, uh, let's think about the, what's really missing. All right, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm talking about that here. Um, it sets up the wrong train of thought. So I know in football you have a de defense and you have an offense. But truly, the defense is already prepared. They may not know it, what play that the offense is running, but they know that RG3 is a quarterback, and he's the fastest quarterback out there, and he's got a really good arm, so he, and he's got all of these different players he can throw to, so they can defend themselves. They're actually doing that on things that they actually know. They, they may not know the exact play that's going to come, but they know that they can defend themselves in certain ways, and sometimes come out on top. All right. The true, the true problem, I feel, is that uh, Defense in depth considers attackers as being the more reliable and the defenders as not, which is a terrible blemish in defense in depth. We have to really put the reliability in our corporations. We have to, to, to ensure that uh, we don't give attackers the upper hand, which is really <coughs> what's happening here. We are saying we're going to be attacked. It's a fact of life. Let's just figure out another way to defend it. What I'm saying in counterintelligence instead is let's go out, let's search the communities, let's search, uh, um, let's do some information gathering, and let's find out what those attacks are that are zero days being made right now before the corporation actually has it, has it used against them. What we're doing is uh, we're locating information and we're putting those puzzle pieces together so that we can better rely on ourselves than the attacker. Excuse me. So as I said, defense inherently uh, disregards offense. I hope most of you are Americans in here and understood the football analogy. If you don't, please talk to me later. Um, point one, all right, with defense in depth, my, my point is we need to put reliability in offensive capabilities. Now there are, there, there are certainly boundaries that you have to know of that you can't cross. Hacking back, certainly uh, two cool words when you put them together, but uh, there could be issues when, with uh, um, you know, government or other organizations that you deal with, and, and certainly where you're hacking into. Now, why is it, if, I, if, I, if anybody wants to answer this, why is it that uh, we might have trouble locating a hacker who has uh, performed an attack on us? And just give me, a, there could be a couple different reasons. Anybody? Attribution is difficult. IP address can be anything. That's, so. a, great, that's a great point. Camouflage. Yes, that's, a, that's another great point. And, and you know, if you can take these camouflage, these, these, these uh, IP uh, uh, anomaly types of uh, uh, things into your capability, 
what you're going to do is you're going to find ways where you can also circle the world via IP address. Boom, 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 boom. You're going to find ways where you can enter Tor out of different or Janus VM or, or whatever it is from a different perspective than just your own IP address. Because obviously what corporations, when they go out, everybody's sitting in there, is essentially going out one IP address. Right? So if you're going to perform these capabilities, you don't want to do it from your own uh, IP address. Right? They're not going to do it from their IP address when they hack you. You don't want to do the same thing. Or you want to follow that actually legitimate logical step that they've done. Uh, people. So, let, so they said that you know, people is one of the, the pillars. Um, so um, senior level commitment is what they say. I mean, frankly, and I've worked with many organizations the past 20 years and many multinational corporations, and senior level commitment is, has really not been that great. There are some, I mean, I heard somebody today talk, uh, a relic talked about uh, this uh, um, fellow that he was talking to was CEO, CIO of a, a company. And uh, um, you probably went to it, some of you did. I, I recognize your faces. And this guy said, uh, you know, Dave, how long does it take to uh, get information? He says, three weeks. He's like, no, I want it in one hour. That's great. And then, of course, of all people, of course, Dave's going to achieve that. And he did that in a matter of months. But uh, um, uh, the, uh, the thing about uh, um, senior level commitment is don't tell me what your organization, you know, don't, don't raise your hand. Yeah, mine, mine sucks. But uh, it's true, pretty much uh, across the level, it's not that great. Um, <laughs> so, good luck. Uh, the next thing is. Uh, um, Oh yeah, people should have a good understanding of the perceived threat. Frankly, we really don't. I mean, I know John Stephen does a great, I don't know if you've ever seen John Stephen's uh, presentation on threat modeling. Mm -hmm. He's a guy from, from DC, right? He's awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, that's, I forget what that dude was from Microsoft that invented and, and actually uh, uh, coined the term uh, threat modeling. But anyway, uh, John Stephen does a great example of how to do threat modeling. I saw it four years ago, actually, at the last New York OWASP. It's still valid. It's a great way to understand threats in your organization. But frankly, small businesses will never do that. Medium businesses and large businesses have real trouble, trouble understanding their uh, perceived threats. So it's likely not going to happen. Then there's a, a commitment. So you have to have a commitment of resources, and of course we're talking about money generally there. Uh, you have to train your people and personal accountability. Well, you know, this is a, this is a great starting point for organizations. I think you, you definitely, uh, uh, you could find this valuable. Um, here's some issues though. Um, now, you can, you can get resources, and it's very difficult still in even today's world for, for multinational billion dollar companies to commit the right amount of resources, whatever they are, people, maybe our resources as well, but certainly the budget, there's budget constraints. That's a fail. Training of people. Training really needs to be done by organizations that know how to do training. What I'm saying is internally, you can, you can give yourself a, uh, you can have an internal expert on uh, software development and secure code writing, and she or he can uh, uh, present training, but it's probably not going to come across in the best manner. If you're going to do that, by the way, outsource it. And then personal accountability. Unfortunately, in most corporate corporations, uh, um, this is a fail as well, because a lot of people generally are looking for a higher paying job. You don't necessarily want to stay with your job. You know, it would be great to be part of XYZ Corporation, and it would be really fun to, to be in that community, but young people especially get to a point where, you know what, I'm ready to move on. Or they get recruited elsewhere. So, you know, the, the accountability's not there. So, you know, it, it, those, all three of those are fails within the uh, defense in depth people. So technology, all right, so this is, Architectural stuff, you can read that if you want. Um, vetting and validation, you know, it, 
I don't think that really generally happens. So my experience in multinational corporations is, is you buy a software or hardware product, let's just say it's $200,000, and you want to deploy it, but you get a couple vendors and you're saying, oh, okay, I like this vendor here, and I like this vendor here, and then what are their prices from the sea levels I've worked with and actually some of the, some of the partnering that I've done with them, and, and you start vetting upon, oh, okay, I like their relationship, you know, they gave me cookies, um, they smile really big, and uh, it's really personal. It's not necessarily technological. So uh, technology is a big fail as well. <coughs> Operations. Um, so this is security policies, uh, accreditation, and certification. Now, certainly, as you know, Defense in Depth, as I said, was built for the United States government first. I mean, it was designed by a guy within the NSA that said, here, let's go about these are our best practices. And then it became a catchphrase for, for our community and application security, and unfortunately it still is. So, you know, who in corporations actually do sufficient baselining, accreditation and certification? It really does not happen very often, and it certainly doesn't happen uh, very well either. We're really behind in that. So here's my point too. It's really become just a mindless catchphrase, defense in depth. And Michael Howard, I mean, he hit it right on the nail. So, uh, um, defense in depth is a broken promise. This next slide, by the way, I'm on video. Um, this was, uh, my, I, have a, I have four kids, right? So I, ha I have a, a daughter that hates to see me go, and I do so many different uh, uh, conferences. And real quick, she always gives this to me to bring with me. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to be overseas for a while. I'll put that one in my little little presentation and show it to you someday. So that's been good. Okay, back to back to counterintelligence. I didn't expect that slide to be in there. Um, be sure to tell her we all like Sandy. <laughs> I will. In fact, she'll know because you're on video saying that. Okay. Tell okay. this grandmother like Sandy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so as stated before, uh, conflict is a measure of uh, prevention, deterrence, and uh, defeat. Now some of the things that we need to think of that we don't necessarily think of in corporations is who is watching you, right? So you should expect that somebody is always studying you for weaknesses. By you, I mean your corporation. I don't mean you personally, although that certainly can be the case and you might get doxxed or something like that, but uh, um, corporations, either other corporations, uh, uh, people that uh, are in different countries, state actors, or even just uh, uh, the anonymous crowd perhaps. They don't prefer your, your product or your methods or, or your political viewpoint. You should always expect you know, that somebody is, is always looking for weaknesses and they will exploit those if they haven't already. Guess what? Everything you can say can be recorded. It is right now. Um, uh, for anybody that knows this one, loose lips sink ships. So here's, some, here's the basic rule of strategic conflict. This is, in, this is not just in military strategic conflict. This is in our information security arena. The offense always wins. Always wins. That is the basic rule. Even if you think that doesn't mean that the good guy is going to lose, this means the offense always wins. All right. So just, just out of curiosity, if I was to use the term open source intelligence, does anybody know what I mean by that? Go ahead. I assume it's uh, Very good. Yeah, so that's a great example. So if, uh, um, here's a great example, if I may say so myself. <laughs> Let's say um, I had somebody over in some Asian country that we don't have really good relationships with, but they own a lot of our property here in the United States, but will remain nameless. <laughs> okay, let's say they found a, uh, a book about a missile. Right? <coughs> that book itself is open source intelligence. 
Um, actually, the, uh, the AppSec USA thing that you've got right there, that's open source intelligence. So you can kind of scroll through that and find out information. You may have not known. It's not necessarily in the public domain yet, at least for this one. Um, but uh, um, that is an excellent example. And please remember that, because I'm going to come back to that. So what is said is not as important as who said it. So that's why I used our, the example I just used. Human intelligence, all right? So this is uh, uh, dealing with the illicit networks, uh, commercial espionage, remember that's hearsay. Uh, communications intelligence, we're not going to use that in our world, in, in, in the world of corporations, because it's illegal. But uh, that's wiretapping. And, and things like that, so we won't be using that. And then uh, cyber collections. So when, we, when I talk of intelligence, or when you hear, hear the word intelligence, think about these four different types of intelligence. I think it's also important for you and your corporations to hack yourselves. I think it's very important that you know what your weaknesses are, you know what your strengths are. I think it's extremely important to do that. Now, from an intelligence perspective, from data get, from, from gathering information, there are, uh, um, I don't expect you to read these right now, but uh, there, is, uh, there is a different, uh, difference in data and information. So data are the observations we get. So if we use a satellite, we get information that way. If I hear you talking, if I look at that open source information, uh, or the open source information is, is uh, uh, data contained in there. And then information is actually the organized set of that information. Now what do we get from that? Right? We get knowledge. So knowledge is a combination, really, of, uh, intel sorry, of data and uh, information. So back to data and information. Oh, by the way, um, you can, these slides will be available. Don't, I, if I've gone through them too quickly, please don't, don't worry about that. They'll be available for you. Um, data, though, we have to remember is unprocessed fact or fiction. Um, information is uh, uh, validated data. And uh, um, there is a distinction that I need to uh, uh, point out. So if I was to say rhetoric, actually, did anybody go to that? Uh, panel that we had a couple days ago, I was con I would somebody told me that uh, um, you know we've heard the rhetoric from that side, and I said I've heard the propaganda from that side. <laughs> I, I've actually defined these here, so if you went, I'm glad you you came back here. So uh, uh, so actually, true rhetoric makes clear intentions, and for the person hearing, they have an understanding of what you're trying to get across, so it motivates them. Manipulative rhetoric is actually propaganda because it's intentionally dishonest with the hearers. Let's talk about some of the unique exploits that really are not being addressed. Now, I'm not going to tell you all of the really cool things, right? But I'm going to tell you a couple maybe that, that you're not familiar with. And what I wanted to talk with is a, is, is a variant of a virus. We saw this with NIMBA. We saw this with... Uh, uh, well, we saw this with a, a lot of different uh, viruses. So, so what happens is, is there, there's a virus that gets out there, and uh, um, the, the, the very efficient uh, AV vendors will find a way to block these viruses and, or get the signatures or, or do things to prevent malicious activity happening to you. What the, what the, the communities, what you'll find in the communities that they're doing is, um, is up here. They'll take apart that virus. They'll use some, actually some, there's some websites that are out there that they can do this to. They'll take apart a virus. They'll separate it into 100 to 500 different exes. They'll see where the signatures are. And they'll replace the signatures with different data. So this is going to disguise that. They're going to recompile that. And now you have another version of a worm that's out there. This is something that actually happens very frequently. And this is why when you see your, your list, of, you go, go on uh, whatever advisory it is, and you see, here's the worm. 
and you see all these different variants, that's because these guys have done this. It's actually a very simple process, unfortunately, and it's a good thing that not a lot of people do that. But uh, you will find that uh, there are communities out here that, that are just exist just for that. And if you, as a corporation, through the counterintelligence <coughs> principles I'm talking about, are, are um, legitimately hooked into those communities, you'll probably be able to find this stuff out before they do. Um, right, so you've got a new virus. And frankly, AV vendors, who you know about it? It's the same virus that was out the, the minute before, just had a few different changes causing the same problem. So you need to find puzzle pieces, and that's what I'm talking about, cyber intelligence. Um, you're using it to uh, um, find, um, do just that. So why do we fail at, at defense and depth? Well, information on attacks comes from secondary sources, right? You can't really find that necessarily reliable. There's too much subject subjectivity in the way that you collect information. You know, we don't all do same things the same way. And then sometimes, even on an individual basis, we don't do them as efficiently as we should. And really, our infrastructures are just too big. Whether you're on the cloud, whether you're internal, it's just, there's just too big of a, of a, a defensive boundary, an enclave to take care of. Um, applications for defense themselves aren't even truly better. Corporations are buying things, buying uh, really legitimate uh, vendors' tools that haven't been vetted appropriately for their own industry or even for this, their own uh, corporation. So um, on counterintelligence, really there's no good formal definition in any arena, arena on counterintelligence. But uh, uh, let me just say, it's not a defensive mechanism, but it's, it's a proactive mechanism. So... Uh, um, it is used to help eliminate threats before they actually happen to you. It's used to find out that information and do something before you're actually affected by it. Um, and it might very well actually include covert actions. The corporation is not necessarily going to, to include covert actions like we might think of that, that girls program covert Affairs, yeah, it's nothing like that. I don't mean that, uh, but it, it's certain. From a corporate perspective, don't do that, but it certainly could. It certainly can on the other side. Um, so hacking, hacking's a great form of counterintelligence. So I don't mind saying I'm an ethical hacker. I'm not a bad hacker. The hacking is a great tool that I like to use, and I know some of you out here that also use it. It's restricted, but it's an unrestricted field of expertise. There's so many different ways to do it. Um, and in itself, it is a basic form of counterintelligence that you're actually using today. Um, and my definition, this is my de definition, it's the goal of the attacker, essentially. Um, accomplish something without anybody else knowing about it. That's what, a, uh, that's what uh, a covert action is. I thought I'd put that in there in case you wanted to know. Um, so there's some other methods of counterintelligence. I like to call it casual browsing, right? So if you know who your, if you know who, who the bad person is that, that is affecting things to your corporation, um, you can actually do that method that I talked about, where you bump around on multiple proxies. And by the way, if you go through Tor, it's being sniffed like crazy. But uh, you can, you can bump around through multiple proxies. You can come through different places where, where you don't know, uh, where they won't know where you're coming from. It's a great thing. Look at, look at that IP address. If they're stupid enough to, to actually uh, um, come from in their corporation or from inside their entity or state or whatever it is, look back at where they're coming from. Um, but remember, they can be dangerous you will get logged, and somebody will know that you did it. Um, you gotta be very careful. Um, back doors. Okay, I, I said this earlier, and actually there's a corporation that, that's trying to build this into a tool that they have right now, but uh, um, if you found a back door in your network, which some of us probably have, 
we really want to get it out of there as quickly as possible. We really want to do things to prevent whatever it's trying to do. But while you're figuring it out, while you're doing that, while you've got all these back doors on, on, your, on your network, why don't you try to follow that root cause? Why don't you attach something? This is, an, this, is a, a, this is an example of what could hypothetically be done. You could attach some type of a, a process that follows that uh, back. Yes, sir. So, so the, 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 the back door or where the back door ends up might not always be an attacker's machine. That's correct. So, so, so you might end up on an innocent victim's machine and you might be enumerating an innocent victim. Right. Which is yeah, this isn't the first step. Yeah, so, so if you're going to hack back, or you're going you're gonna to casual browse, you definitely want to find out, he's right, that information of, of where you're going to. Because <laughs> they may have done just the same thing, circled the world several times, jumped on an IP address, and then started hacking you. That's correct. Or they may have gone to your, your maybe your Coca-Cola, and they went into Pepsi and circled the world, came over to Pepsi and started attacking <laughs> you. It's not necessarily Pepsi. Um, so, yeah, that's a very good point. I'm glad you pointed it out. Um, deception. So I talked about deception in, in uh, uh, advertisements. This is deception in these political advertisements that we see right now. Um, but in, in the IT community, in, in the InfoSec community, um, remember that targets are dynamic and reactive. They're not always the same place. They may not even be the correct place. And you have to be very careful because you're going to enter into some other relationship that you didn't intend to uh, do in the first place. Um, here's my uh, third point, and uh, it's my final point actually. Warning is a cumulative strategy, and it's not merely uh, current. All right. So if I know what my warnings are right now, it doesn't mean anything except for right now. You keep gathering more warnings, right? So if you're going to build a process to fix something, don't just rely on what you know that moment when you determine something was wrong. It's a cumulative measure. Uh, a couple quotes um, from uh, uh, people that I found uh, have wrote some really good books on uh, intelligence and uh, counterintelligence. Um, any questions? Yes, sir? Can you exp uh, expand on the how and who of uh, the comments you said before is being sent by Crazy? Oh, Tor? Yeah. Oh, the how? Yeah. And who? The who? Hmm. I can't confirm or deny any of that, but I, I can say that uh, um, if you're using Tor, it's probably a good idea to enter it through uh, um, multiple proxies to disguise yourself in different methods before you go through Tor. I'm just saying that, that from my research, from my looking into these communities like I've been talking to, what I found out that uh, um, Tor is being sniffed pretty well. Yeah, whoever, whoever is, has that Tor network, you know, whether it be in Austin or whether it be in New York or, or Helsinki, is probably sending it pretty well. So, yeah. Getting back to your hacking back yeah. thing, um, going with that users.php example. Yes. Um, clearly, depending on where you are, the laws of going out and actually attacking the attacker mm -hmm. from your corporate site, you, you might be looking at some trouble. Right. What if you put, say, like an Excel sheet with a payload that they're not going to like on your users.php page, they happen to beach into you mm -hmm. through their attack, grab it, and then something bad happens. Are you facing Liable? any liability at that point? Probably. Really? I'll, say, I'll say probably you have some liability. It really depends on the situation and uh, what they've done to you. So I would, uh, I would presume that uh, if... Uh, if you're going to do something like this, you would pass it by your uh, uh, legal community. And, uh, and I'm, uh, I encourage myself to hack back. I can't encourage you to do that. Um, I just think it's a great method to use. And, and have plausible deniability in the file, I suppose. That, oh, that wasn't intentionally placed there. Right. Well, you know what's going to happen with files, like you're saying? Those will sometimes be in honeypots. Yeah, so, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Just something nasty for them to go pick up. Right, that's right. So, so you will find honeypots, and you will find a lot of honeypots out there with files like that, with, uh, with deceptive uh, uh, XML documents or whatever um, that uh, somebody's going to take back, and oops, something happened to them. So you actually do find that, and it's most commonly in Clearly, you can't, you can't go outside of the house chasing down a burglar and shoot him. 
but when they come in, depending on the law, they can. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of restrictions, and you certainly wouldn't, if you're from the United States, you wouldn't do, want to do anything overseas, absolutely not. But, uh, um, yeah, there, there are different things that probably need to pass through legal. Good question. Can I answer any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, are, are you familiar with the Ian Ahmed's talk uh, that he did at DerbyCon this year for sexy defense? Um, so he was talking about doing things like, one, getting very creative with his um, like lawyer team. It's super important. So they were doing things like going on to skiddy <coughs> forums, like you know, known people that they know are attacking them. Mm -hmm. And then what they would do is he would actually backdoor their remote access Trojans mm -hmm. with a signature. Mm -hmm. He would then, you know, take his known signature, put it in his snort feed, so he could see when these people were using, you know, these, he, he backdoored their backdoor. That's exactly what, what, what I was talking about earlier. So he, he wasn't happened. actually directly attacking the attacker, mm -hmm. um, but sort of because of sort of his subversive uh, defense, I guess, he could see when they were coming in. In, in, so in a more common legal it. way, and, and I'm out of time, but in a more common legal way is uh, if you can do something to, to further clarify the IP address that they're actually coming from originally, that may or may not be, I can't confirm or deny that it may or may not be, but that may or may not be a better way to find that information out. There are definitely methods, and that's certainly one of them. Yes, sir. So, so the, the, the problem is, is um, as you said, and as I said, like, there, there might be an innocent third party involved in all this, mm -hmm. and, and, and he doesn't really care yeah. like, that, that you're backdooring a backdoor. You know, he, he didn't sign up for any of it, um, and, and he might be the person that's going to go, right, you hacked me, and you hacked me. I don't care who, who either of you are. That's certainly a possibility you have to consider. Um, but there's a lot of analysis that goes into it before you actually put that file mm -hmm. into a honey pot or do these other methods before you use it. Yeah. Does your research so every hack is potentially dangerous, but yes. does it make any sense to try to distinguish between the call them dangerous hackers and the people who are just kind of flying around? Here's the reason why I feel well you, you need to you need to feel whatever you feel is best, but uh, if you can get in all the communities, what you'll find is these people are actually, by getting in, I mean being part of those communities, and it's legal to be part of an IRC chat, right? So, uh, or some other types of chats, maybe, sir. Um, you get into those lower class hackers and higher class hacker communities, and you find that it's actually fortunate that they're not talking to each other, because all these pieces of the puzzle, if they were actually put together, some serious attacks could happen. That's, so I think it's, it's serious. It's a good idea to, to just information gather as many places as possible. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very much for coming to my class.